The best productivity books don't change the way that you work. They change the way that you think. Most productivity book recommendations are full of books about how to get the most money or how to have the greatest output. But the books on my list? Let me tell you about these books. These are the books that actually helped me reframe productivity from being all about the hustle to being about building the life that was best for me. Yes, I do have some recommendations that are gonna give practical productivity advice. But at the end of the video, you are gonna have a new reading list that includes books that help you change your life, not just your task list. Okay, so I told you we are going to start with some practical guides on productivity, and uh, these are the two practical guides that I have on my list. These two books really changed how I do productivity more than anything. I love relying on the information in these two books when I am thinking about changing my habits or changing the way I do my productivity strategy. So let's actually start with David Allen, Getting Things Done. This is a really recent edition, even though it is a very old book. I, st I started reading this last year and implementing the techniques and strategies he has this year. So when I say this is a foundational text for productivity, I really, really mean it. I have been on productivity YouTube. I have read other like task management books and most of the content that you see references somehow what is in David Allen's book. So the stuff in this book is really, really foundational. It definitely set up and has sort of a relationship with any other productivity content that you will see. So like he has base definitions for what counts as a project, what counts as a task, what counts as a plan. Like he has just very basic definitions for all of those things that make this book so influential on the productivity space writ large. And you'll often hear me say in videos, oh, David Allen says this about tasks, about projects, whatever. You'll often hear me reference it because it is so foundational and so critical to the way we think about productivity in the productivity space. This book really taught me about task management and how not to lose anything, right? So like not only does he have tips for categorizing and organizing your tasks, but that categorizing and organizing is built to make the stuff you need to get done actually actionable. So you're never looking at a to-do list that's overwhelming again. You're just looking at small actions that you can get done right away, which is so awesome. So this book is super juicy. You don't have to use his whole system in order to get benefits from this. For a while I was just picking and choosing parts of his system to sort of rely on. Either way, it is a great practical step-by-step -step guide that is so foundational to the way we talk about productivity on YouTube and in general. The other book is Atomic Habits. <laughs> now this book comes with a little bit of a caveat, which is that I really love it, but I think one of the reasons I love it is because at the time that I was looking for habit science, this book had just come out and it was like all the rage. Like I almost, I almost didn't put it in this video because it is almost a meme for how much it's recommended on Productivity YouTube, but it is really a good book about the foundations of habit formation. I think if maybe I was in an earlier generation of productivity folks. I might be relying on like the seven habits of highly successful people or or the power of habit or one of those sort of older books. And those are definitely foundational texts to someone. For me, my habit science book of choice is this one that James Clear wrote. It shares a lot of the insights that are in those previous texts and sort of forms them into these laws that I think are very easy to understand and easy to di digest. Like even if you don't understand everything under the principle of making it attractive, you can sort of understand based on the way he describes it just in the title. Like, okay, I need to make my habit really attractive to me somehow. Like I need to make it appealing. So um, I think he, the way he distilled the information that already exists about habit science is really informative and helpful. Now he's not a habit scientist. Like he doesn't have a degree in this kind of stuff as far as I know, um, but he did. He is a pretty good writer. And so did then distill all that information into his books. And the one thing that I really love about this is that it is focused on tiny changes to get remarkable results. So most of James Clear's advice is like, you need to make your habit really small and really simple, and then you can do it. And I think that advice is tremendous because the more we think of the things we want to do as very easy and very attainable, the more that we will do them. And so he has lots of practical tips to make the things that you want to do, the person you want to be more attainable and more achievable pretty much immediately. And I reference stuff that he talks about in this book, again, all the time on my channel. So I highly recommend this one, even though it's sort of a 
cliche at this point. One habit that I'm trying to make easier in my life is managing my money. Specifically, I have a bad habit of letting those pesky little subscriptions pile up. An app here, a membership there, and before long, I'm paying for a ton of stuff that I'm not even using. That's where today's sponsor, Rocket Money, comes in. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower your bills, and manage your money. I'm using this app to get rid of a ton of old memberships. They will save safely and securely identify reoccurring charges and cancel unwanted subscriptions. Rocket Money helps save its customers up to $740 per year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. I am also using Rocket Money to lower my bills. If you upload a photo of a bill, they will actually contact the company for you to negotiate a lower price. So if you want to save more and spend less, join over 5 million customers using Rocket Money today. Go to to rocketmoney.com slash Rachel in theory or click the link in my description box below to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash Rachel in theory to get started for free today. Thanks again to Rocket Money for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. Okay, this third book will make sense if you've been around my YouTube channel for a while. You know that obviously I care a lot about productivity. I think about a lot about productivity, but I care the most about the concept of time. Time fascinates me as a concept when it's fit into this productivity scheme because it is the only truly non-renewable resource that we have. We can always make more money. We cannot make more time. So uh, this book I read several years ago. This is actually a brand new copy because I realized I didn't have one and I needed to have one, not just for this video, but because I want to be relying on the text material um, itself uh, just for my own life. But I read it a couple years ago and it sort of blew my mind. It broke the illusion of time for me and helped me see the time I was spending very clearly. Obviously time is finite. It is our most precious resource, but human beings are so bad at seeing time clearly. We have all sorts of biases, or we might feel like, you know, hard things we're doing take forever, and fun things we're doing go past us in the blink of an eye. So we are not very good at seeing time the actual way that it is. But what Laura does in this book is sort of argue that to have it all is related to how well we see our time. And in order to really accomplish the things we want to accomplish, we need to be able to see that time very clearly. Otherwise, it is run away with us and we have no control over it. So she provides exercises and tips for how to feel off the clock even when your life is very scheduled. I've honestly implemented some of those tips. I have a video where I track my time for a couple of weeks. I'll leave it linked up in the cards. And that's her technique. That's borrowed from this book. This is also the first productivity book I read that is focused more on how you feel about your tasks and productivity than your output. So the tagline here is feel less busy while getting more done. But the idea is that what you're feeling is relief and what you're feeling is is easy. Obviously, um, David Allen getting things done has the art of stress-free productivity. So it's it's kind of about how you feel. But I read Laura Vanderkam's book way before I read David Allen's book. Um, so this was the first introduction I had to thinking about my productivity as something that was giving me a feeling. It might sound really small, but it was really important to me at the time to understand like, oh, the way I am approaching my studying, my projects, my work is actually changing the way I feel. And the way I feel actually has an effect on my output. So I really recommend reading this because it gave me that critical insight and it helped me to start seeing my time more clearly um, so that I could spend time off the clock, you know, doing what was actually meaningful to me. In the book, Laura goes through many examples where she wants to feel off the clock so that she can relax or spend time with her family. And I definitely feel like a big thing I'm trying to make time for now and always is seeing friends, seeing family, seeing the people that I love. I never want my productivity to get in the way of those critical things in my life because time is something we can't get back, especially time with loved ones. So this book really changed the way I see time. I recommend the exercises in here for anyone who is having trouble feeling like they are super overwhelmed and super stressed out because it really, really helps. The next two books really helped me refocus my productivity around what mattered to me. They helped answer the question, what am I even being productive for? Four. Maybe the most important book on this list for that reason is called Real Self-Care. It is by Pooja Langshman, and honestly, I don't even 
think that she would consider this a productivity book, but it was so transformative to me for thinking about what I am doing and what I am actually spending my time on that it has to be included in this list. It was gifted to me by a friend who pressed it into my hands very gently and kindly, telling me, I think you need to read this, and boy, did I need to read it. It is like the eldest sister survival guide, basically. It has nothing to do with your practical productivity advice, but it has everything to do with values and boundaries. I've made so many videos based on the things I learned from this book and how I'm implementing strategies from this book into my life. I will leave a particularly good one about um, linking up your values with your goals and tasks up in the cards. So please go watch that after you're done with this video. But basically this book helped me really identify what I was doing for me and what I was doing for someone else and how I could better protect my boundaries when there's huge pressure on everyone, but particularly women to keep saying yes to producing more or doing doing more or sacrificing more for someone else. So I think this is a critical guide, especially for women who are in the world and who are constantly being asked things of by family, friends, coworkers, bosses, business partners, whoever. I think this is definitely a critical read for that. I think men in the audience can obviously get a lot out of the stuff that is in here, but just know it is kind of one of those books that's geared towards women because the issues she's talking about in the book sort of affect women in a greater magnitude than they affect men, but it is absolutely absolutely not, like the tips in the book are absolutely not universal to women and can definitely be applied no matter your gender. But like, it is such a practical guide, a useful guide for developing boundaries and thinking about the time you spend differently. She literally came from like a wellness cult is her sort of story. She was in a, a wellness cult. And um, obviously that cult had a lot of false ideas about how one should take care of oneself and what the meaning of our, our time here was. Uh, and then when she got out of the cult, she was like, oh God, I need to reevaluate. So she wrote this book really from the perspective that self-care has become a marketing technique and a band-aid over the actual like real trauma that women face under patriarchy to just do more, sacrifice more, give more. So I really think this book is one of the most important books on this list. You can see I have doggy eared so many pages and some of the most important exercises are the ones that help you identify, you know, are you living according to your values? Do you have a life that is built on this list of, of values that you want to protect and, and feel like you are living into every moment of your life? Um, it really helped me see the ways I was sacrificing my own boundaries. She has this whole little quiz, like boundaries quiz in here for you to answer and address basically like how successful you are at holding your own boundaries or if you are more porous. And it really helped me see that I was pretty porous in different relationships in my life. Like I had bad, bad boundaries in my relationships, but good boundaries at work. And using the techniques in this book, I started to see that the band-aid solutions that were sold to me and are sold to everyone are really just that. They're just band-aid solutions, but we have so much power to take control of the way we spend our time and the values with which we lead our lives. And so much power to set boundaries around those things and make sure we are living living a productive and happy and healthy life that is as productive to the end that we want it to be. So really, really recommend this book. Again, mostly for women, but very hugely applicable to anyone else of any other gender who wants to read it and learn something good because I certainly did. It just really changed my mindset in a great way. And the last book on this list is Ali Abdal's Feel Good Productivity. This is another book that I have made a lot of videos based around because Ali Abdal just has really good ideas in here and really good research about how to make the things you are spending time on, the things you have to do to be productive, feel good at the end of the day. So we just talked about real self-care as a guide to finding what you actually want to spend your time on. Laura Vanderkam obviously tells us you have more time than you think. And then Ali Abdal is saying, well, those things we have to do that need our attention, this is how you make those more fun and feel better. I think he has a lot of really good uh, tips and tricks in here. And honestly, he has so much research done. He is already a YouTuber. So if you haven't heard of his channel, go check it out. 
one of the things I really like about him as a creator and as a writer is that his whole attitude is very friendly and almost all of the content gives off the vibe that what you should do should be easy and fun more than it should be backbreaking and ultra optimized. Of course, he is a business owner, a YouTuber, a very successful YouTuber and business owner. So you have to sort of take all of that with a grain of salt. Like the hours in a day that you have are not necessarily the same hours in a day that Ali Abdal has. But in this book, he is coming from the perspective of when he used to work as a doctor, when his hours were kind of insane and he wasn't getting paid very well. Um, or when he was first starting out on YouTube when all of those things were also true. So he has a lot of really good practical advice for um, that stage when you're in that stage and all of your time isn't necessarily your own. How do you make all of that time feel better and how do you approach it with a better mindset? I think this book is really important because it marks a shift in the way productivity is talked about in the productivity space, especially online. It sort of marks a shift from being about, uh, oh, actually, <laughs> this quote really um, sums it up, a much needed antidote to hu hustle culture. So true. I completely agree with that. It is definitely a response to all of that productivity advice that's like, just do it. Like, you know, just like set your schedule and then you actually have to accomplish, like have the, have the discipline, blah, blah, blah. Like he definitely talks about discipline and talks about having that like spirit of enthusiasm for your work. But, and he also talks about how that is not really how you succeed and be happy. That is how maybe you succeed and then end up burnt out. But this is definitely a really, really positive addition to the dialogue because it offers solutions for how not to get burnt out and still how to get the things done that you need to get done. So really, really good addition to the overall productivity conversation. And obviously it made this list because it has helped me adjust and change my mindset to say, okay, I can't do what I want all of the time necessarily, but I can make the time that I am spending working hard, really rewarding and feel really good. These are the five books that changed the way I think about productivity. But what are some of yours? Leave your recommendations down in the comments. I would love new suggestions. In the meantime, I'm going to leave a video about finding your values on the screen right here next to my head so that you can continue your soft productivity journey. Thank you so much for watching, for being subscribed, for being awesome. And I will see you in the next one.